All right, so now we're gonna be looking at chapter nine, part two, which is gonna deal more with the movements of the joint. So this table right here just gives you an idea of the different types of movements that are available that your body can undergo. These include things like gliding all the way down to circumduction on one side and then rotation to opposition. And we're gonna talk about a majority of these as we go through these notes. So when we're looking at these movements, the first one we wanna look at is flexion. So flexion is gonna be where we decrease the angle of a joint. And so when we look here, this would be an idea of flexion when we are gonna decrease the angle. So this is flexion of the elbow, okay? Another way that we can decrease the angle of the joint is looking down when you can put your head, to, your chin down to your chest. That's flexion of the neck, okay, as it comes up. We also see that you can do flexion of the knee where you kick the knee um, where it starts out straight and then you bend it down. Okay, so those would all be examples of flexion. Uh, another movement is extension. This is going to be where we increase. So it's the opposite of flexion. So with the arm, when it's flexed like this, we see that extension is where we bring it back and we put it where it's long again. The same thing with the head. We have flexion with the chin down. When we look back up, that's going to be extension. Okay. Now, hyperextension would be if we go back even further where we can go back and look like up at the ceiling. This is an example of hyperextension. You can also do hyperextension with your leg in the sense of your hip. So these are some examples of flexion, extension, and hyperextension. So the next ones we want to look at are called abduction and adduction. So when we do abduction, abduction means you're moving it away from your body. So if your arm is at your side, it's going to be where you're going to raise it up away from your body. Okay, so raising it away from your body. Okay, same thing with the leg if we're going out to the side. You can think of abduction as A, B, D, A, boy, dog. What does a boy dog do when it needs to go to the bathroom? It lifts its leg up, puts it out to the side. That's abduction. On the other hand, the opposite of abduction is adduction. So if it's out to the side, we see that we're gonna pull it back towards our body. That's going to be adduction, where we're bringing it back down, okay? We also see you can do the same thing with your fingers, okay? So when your fingers are all going to be spread apart, that's abduction, and when they're all put together, that's adduction. So adduction, spread apart, abduction. All right, so the next one we have is what we call circumduction. Circumduction is where we can actually do a circle movement. Okay, so we're gonna to turn to this side here and I want you to do a circle movement with your arm. So you're gonna come all the way around. Circumduction, so it's going all the way around. Okay, so you can see that you can do that with your arm. You can also do that with your thumb where you can go around, okay? And then the leg can do it as well. We then see rotation. Rotation is going to be where it revolves on an axis. So this is gonna be when you say no. So when you put your head side to side and you say no, that's going to be a rotation. We also see that you can do a rotation of your leg where you pull your toes in versus out, okay, with your hip. And then we also can do a rotation with your arm. If your elbow is flexed and put at the side, you can rotate it in and out, okay? So we can have a rotation that's present. All right, so then we have some things that we can look at that are special movements, and these are mostly gonna be for your mandible, which is your jaw and your shoulders. So the first one we have elevation. Elevation is a superior movement, and recall that superior means up. So this would be when you shrug your shoulders. So shrug your shoulders up to your ears. There you go, so shrugging your shoulders, that's elevation. Another would be when you, okay, you can relax. Another would be when you close your mouth. When you close your mouth completely, you've elevated your jaw, okay? The opposite of elevation is an inferior movement called depression. Okay, so if you do have your um, shoulders up shrugged when you bring them back down, that's depression. When you open your mouth, that is depression. Okay, so that's the example. Then we have what we call protraction and retraction. All right, so this is going to be where you're going to be at the side. Okay, so you're going to be like this. So when we do protraction, this is an anterior movement, and so this is when you're moving like your chin forward. So Kira, you're gonna go like this, see? Forward. So there we go, protraction, and you're moving it forward. We also can do protraction with your shoulders where you move them forward. Yep, yeah, one like that, good. Not up, but forward, good. We also see retractions, the opposite. So if her chin is protracted out, we wanna bring it in. That is retraction, so bringing it back in. Same thing with the shoulders. If they've been pulled forward, we want to straighten up. This would be like having good posture, pulling your shoulders back. Okay, so examples there. 
All right, the next ones are gonna deal with the feet. So when we look at the feet, we have what we would call inversion and eversion. So, no, it's okay, let me see your foot. No, straighten your leg. Just let me put your foot here. You're fine. So when we look at inversion, the foot is going to be pulled where we have it going in. So the sole of the foot is gonna go in. This is inversion. On the other hand, if eversion is gonna be lateral movement, so this is gonna be where it's going to be going out. Like you're pulling your big toe down and moving it out. So this is eversion, okay? We also have dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is when your heel goes down. So it's going to be, relax your foot, baby, let me push on it. It's gonna be where you pull your toes up. And plantar flexion is when you point your toes. So point your toes real good. Okay, so pointing the toes. So dorsiflexion is when it's pulled up, plantar flexion is when you point the toes. So when we're looking at this whole idea of supination and pronation, supination is going to be, bend your elbow, supination is going to be where your hand is open and it's up. So technically you could put some soup in it. Just keep your hand like this. So see how you could put some soup in here? Looks like a bowl. Okay, pronation is going to be the opposite where you turn it over. So pronation is going to be where the palm is down. So palm down is pronation, palm up is supination. Another one we can see is opposition. This is touching your fingers to your thumb. Okay, so when you put your hand out here and you go from one finger to each finger to your thumb, that's opposition. Okay, because you are pulling your thumb to the opposite side of your hand. Okay, so that's opposition. Thank you to my assistant. Now we're going to look... <laughs> Now we're going to look at the axial joint movements and the appendicular joint movements. And so some examples of these movements, remember that sutures are the cemented areas in your skull, so there's no movement. We see that you have the atlo-occipital, which is going to be where the atlas is going to sit with the occipital bone of your head. So this is going to allow you to do flexion, okay, and extension. This is why you can do this and you can say yes, okay. The atelo-axial is going to be a rotation joint, which allows you to say no. So this is between your cervical spine one and two, the atlas and the axis. We then have the radial ulnar joint. So this is between the radius and the ulna, and this is gonna be for rotation. So it's gonna allow you to do a rotation and supination and pronation. All right, so it's that type of movement. The ankle is going to allow you to do dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, so pulling the heel up, or pulling the toes up and the heel down, and then pointing the toes. And it also allows you to do inversion and eversion. The temporomandibular joint is going to be the joint between your mandible and your temporal bone. This is also known as TMJ. This is gonna allow you to do elevation when you close your mouth, depression when you open it, it also is going to let you do protraction, where you're going to be pushing forward, and retraction where you pull back. All right, so let's talk about aging joints, looking at disorders in medical terminology. Um, the effect of aging on joints varies considerably from person to person, but by the age of 80, almost everyone has developed some type of degeneration in their knees, elbows, hips, and shoulders. And this is because we use those joints a lot. This is known as osteoarthritis, and it is at least partially age-related. Now, it could be due to the fact that you're also very hard on your joints when you were younger in life, and so osteoarthritis could happen before the age of 80. Aging also results in a thinning of the articular cartilage, so that cushion between those bones starts to thin, and we see that you start to decrease, the decrease of synovial fluid starts to happen. So we're not producing as much, and so it causes them to not have that friction control fluid like we had when we were younger. Ligaments also start to shorten and lose their elasticity as we age. So when we talk about joint arthroplasty, this is a surgical implantation of an artificial joint. The most common joints that are replaced are going to be your hips, knees, and shoulders. Um, there are some potential complications of a joint replacement. This can include infections, blood clots, and even nerve damage. And so this right here shows you a hip replacement. It's involving only the femur in this case, so this would be considered a partial hip replacement. Um, a total hip replacement would involve the uh, replacing of the acetabulum, which is the part of the actual coxal bone, and the head of the femur. And so if you look here, this is showing how the bone should look, and then we see that this is going to be the components of the new hip, and they remove the head of the femur and implant this new device, and they've replaced the joint. Okay, so this is an example of a hip replacement. 
This one is showing you the components of an artificial knee. So when we talk about a knee replacement, if you'll notice here that they shave off the distal end of the humerus and they also cut the proximal head of the tibia. When they do this, they put in some hardware on both sides. We have the femoral component that goes on the femur and you have the tibial component which screws into the tibia. We also have the patellar component where they replace the patella or at least they put a cap on the patella bone. We see that this is going to be what we consider a knee replacement. So if you look at the x-ray, you can see that there's hardware now instead of the actual bone. So guys, I do have some videos here that you can click on and watch if you want. Um, one is, of course, just looking at the anatomy of the knee joint. One shows you a knee replacement, and another one shows you where they're doing an arthroscopic type surgery, um, looking at the ACL, which remember is that anterior crucial ligament, which is a ligament that's inside of the capsule. All right, so these are just some videos. If you would like to watch them, it gives you some idea of how these surgeries are performed. Another thing that we can see is that a lot of times in the shoulder area, we have, sorry, in the elbow area, we have a Tommy John injury that we would have to do what we call a Tommy John surgery. This is where the ulnar collateral ligament or the UCL, which is gonna be on the outside of the capsule on the ulnar side has to be reconstructed. It's been replaced with a tendon from somewhere else in the body, okay? And so they use a lot of times, if you see here, it's torn and we need to replace it and they use kind of a figure eight type of structure to help fix this. And this is going to be seen a lot of times with pitchers because of the way that they fling their elbow when they pitch. You may also see this a lot of times in repetitive sports like tennis or even maybe golf in some cases, but we see it mostly in baseball. Another injury that can occur in a joint is what we call turf toe. This occurs after extremely forceful upward bending of the big toe. Okay, so when we look at it, we can come up with that plantar flexion. It causes lots of pain in the base of the big toe. This is normally due to a hyperextension, and the treatment normally is going to be what we call RICE. Now, RICE stands for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So rest, ice, compression, and elevation. This is very common in football players, ballerinas, and anybody that uses the, their feet a lot, even like runners, where they're going to be coming out of the blocks and things like that.